Right now we have Dr. Mori. You can hear him every Sunday night at 9 o'clock here on AM 630. He's always a delight to talk to. Good morning, Dr. Moray. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure and honor. What makes our Oneness Pentecostal friends a cult? Well, first of all, you must understand that the word cult is, is a modern word coming from the Latin cultus. In and of itself, it isn't a nasty word, a negative word. It does not imply, for example, that a United Pentecostals or Jehovah's Witnesses or whoever run around killing people or they're nasty or mean. Um, it, the word is used today uh, in apologetics simply to refer to those religious bodies which are in violation of the doctrines of historic Orthodox Christianity as expressed by the great creeds of the Church. So when we talk about the United Pentecostals, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, on down the line, um, this is a reference to their teachings. This is not a statement um, that they are all like Jim Jones, or they run around killing people, things of that nature. So you've got to take the the animas. You've got to take the the evil flavor that the popular media uh, uses with the word cult. Got to remove that when you are dealing with the issue of apologetics. Now, uh, the United Pentecostals is they would just be one of many modalist groups who in terms of their teaching, they openly deny the doctrine of the Trinity and the orthodox understanding of the deity of Christ, the, the Father, the Holy Spirit. So their view of God, their view of salvation, uh, in which they state that the speaking in tongues is essential for salvation. Let me, let me stop you right there. The Holy Spirit thinks let, of that name. Okay, let me stop you right there, because... A lot of them will point to Mark 16, where Jesus says, These signs shall follow those who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. Isn't it implying from that verse in Mark 16 that believers will speak in tongues? From what well, Jesus one, said? Uh, uh, one, that, that is not part of the original text to begin with. It's an uh, all, it's but any more than handling snakes. Mm -hmm. But so it's, it's, an all but, it's an all but two of the manuscripts, right? No. How many manuscripts? Uh, there are three different endings for Mark, okay. and um, none of them uh, would seem to be the original. They're all quite late. But how do you feel about but, the... But, uh, let, me, you know. let me just ask you this. How do you feel about the story of uh, the uh, woman being caught in adultery? That wasn't in all the manuscripts. In fact, no, that's Mar the Mark textual. 16 manuscript, there's more for that than the woman caught in adultery, and yet we well, don't have any the, problem except for that. Your expression of more for that you're not counting noses. It isn't a matter of how many manuscripts you can pile up. It has to do with the quality, mm -hmm. the age, the family. There are many areas. But that isn't germane to this issue. Okay. When you're dealing with a religious body whose view of God, man, salvation, Christ, on down the line, um, is in opposition to historic Christianity, and they readily admit this, uh, they're not ashamed of it. They boldly state it. Uh, then you're dealing with a religious organization that has separated itself from Orthodox Christianity. So uh, the word cult simply means uh, here's a religious organization. It's incorporated. It has a P.O. box number. It has a tax-exempt number. And it is not teaching historically the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is for that reason... Uh, in modern times, we use the word cult, meaning that it is a church, a religion, that is not part of historic biblical Christianity. Now, um, for the person who says, no, doesn't the Bible say in Jesus, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I mean, they're looking to Jesus. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6 talks about the mighty God, uh, the everlasting Father. Uh, wouldn't it be easy to, to say, okay, it's, it's talking about the same person here. God is, is God. Well, Second Corinthians uh, 11, the Apostle Paul said that the problem he faced in his own day was that people were defining 
who Jesus was, and there were different interpretations of Jesus. So he said there were other Gospels, other Jesuses, and other spirits, and that there is only one Gospel, one Jesus, and the cults of his time didn't have the right Jesus. So just because a group uses the word Jesus doesn't mean they have the same Jesus. And um, I'm sure Dr. Bernard would tell you that he does not have the Trinitarian Jesus, the Nicene Jesus, uh, in mind when he speaks of Jesus. So it, we're, we're, not, we're not getting into the word game just because you use the same words, God, Jesus, salvation. You define them the same. That's the issue. It's in the definition of the terms, not the use of the term. Uh, that's the issue at hand. I, I guess the, the, the area that I get a little bit confused on is, is my finite mind cannot comprehend the Trinity. We, uh, it'll, I'll understand it when I get to heaven, but, but uh, speaking on, on a fleshly, earthly level, uh, I, I just don't get it. And I, I had a discussion with a UPC pastor years ago, and, uh, and, and his version is that Jesus is God. My version is that Jesus is God. Whether he's within the nature of one God, there are three individuals, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and each are God, or God takes the form of Jesus, God takes the form of the Holy Spirit, and God is God, uh, to, to me, that's splitting hairs. Well, it's not the issue of, is Jesus divine in his nature? Is Jesus the Father? Is Jesus the Holy Spirit? Uh, is, is God to be understood as one eternal divine being uh, who for all eternity has been the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. And the issue of incomprehensibility, everybody has to struggle with that. The mere existence of an infinite personal being, creator of heaven and earth, that in and of itself is incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. But the Bible warns us from the very beginning that, there, that the finite human mind is not going to be able to contain the infinite understanding of God. So the fact that the Trinity is incomprehensible is no more an issue than any of the other attributes of God. They also are in, incomprehensible. But that refers to our problem. Well, I guess the, the, the question then that, that I have, to, to boil it down, is we have uh, one God in, in three persons. Mm -hmm. They have one God who comes to, uh, to three different modes. It seems to me that we can agree to disagree on that, and, and uh, that, that uh, it almost becomes like the blind man and the elephant, the old uh, the parable we've heard so many times. Well, again, again, you're not talking the same. It's not three modes. You must understand, as, as Dr. Bernard would tell you, you could have 50 modes. God has put on various masks. He has manifested himself in, in other things, be it the pillar by day and the fire by night. So it's not the issue of whether or not God has manifested himself mm -hmm. in different ways. Everybody believes that, Trinitarians included. But God in his essence, in terms of how he's revealed himself in Scripture, for example, when Jesus was challenged by the Jews um, concerning his own testimony, they said, look, uh, you are testifying that what you're saying is true because you say so. He responded, no, by the mouth of two or three separate witnesses, a matter is established, the Father is one witness, and I am the second witness, and therefore what I'm saying is true. So mm -hmm. here Jesus is saying, by necessity, the Father is a separate witness to what the Son is saying, mm -hmm. and that's two witnesses making his preaching valid, and the Father, of course, confirmed uh, what Jesus was doing at the baptism and the Mount of Transfiguration when he said, you know, this is my son, the son that I love. So it, what you're coming down to is, is a different view of God, a different view of Jesus, 